Good afternoon. This is Jason Ozels with RCR Wireless News. Welcome to today's webinar presented by Freescale, Software Strategies and Solutions for Next Generation Networks. Our presenter today is Satish Anandire, Product Marketing Manager of Digital Networking at Freescale. Now before I hand this off to Satish, I'd like to cover a few admin items. Within 24 hours, all attendees and registrants will receive a link to the on-demand recorded version of this webinar. During the webinar, you are encouraged to submit questions throughout the presentation. Satish will answer these near the end of the session during a live Q&A forum. Now, before we begin, I'd like to launch a poll to get to better know our audience. Which market segment are you most interested in? Please select one or more of the following. We'll give this just a, a minute or two a run and we will share results. About 50% voted. Another couple of seconds. Thank you for submitting your votes. All right, they're starting to taper off now. Let's go ahead and close this poll and then we'll share the results. Well, we have a clear winner here in North America at almost 80%. Central and Latin America coming right in next at 33 with Europe, the Middle East, and Africa at 21%. Okay, thank you, Kyle. And without any further ado, I'd like to introduce our speaker, Satish Anandire, Product Marketing Manager of Digital Networking at Freescale. Satish, take it away. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the RCI webinar. Today, we'll be talking about uh, software strategies and uh, solutions for next generation uh, wireless networks. So the agenda will be uh, take a quick look at uh, the mobile data crunch in today's wireless networks. I think uh, it's a big problem. Uh, we'll look at uh, what kind of challenges uh, this poses. Uh, we look at uh, evolving technologies that uh, that address try to address uh, these challenges, and uh, we'll talk about uh, system solution strategies. Uh, really focused on uh, software-driven uh, system-on-chip type solutions, and then uh, you know we'll look at some conclusions uh, out of today's talk. So uh, this is a, a boilerplate slide that will set the context for the problem, uh, mobile data traffic tsunami. So uh, pretty much, uh, you know, uh, global data, mobile traffic uh, will grow to about 11.2 exabytes uh, per month by 2017. And uh, this is actually uh, a non-trivial challenge for existing wireless networks to support this type of uh, mobile data traffic. Um, and then uh, the other key statistic here is that um, two-thirds of uh, mobile data traffic in 2017 will be mobile video, so which uh, which presents an interesting challenge. And pretty much uh, these things are really driven by uh, significant proliferation of uh, uh, smartphone and tablets and, and uh, devices. The, this data is actually available from Cisco VNI. So what does this... Uh, uh, lead to it's uh, it's really all about um, quality of user experience uh, in today's world and what does that really mean that means uh, you need to actually with your mobile devices really connect fast into the uh, network and it should, it's anytime uh, anywhere and a lot of traffic actually is really um, coming out of um, these mobile devices and in crowded areas like uh, you see the Fenway Park in Boston, you know, a lot of people in there, it's downtown Boston, you know. So it's really where people are most concentrated that you have a large usage of data. And in addition to that, uh, you know, people would always uh, like to stay connected. You know, Facebook and Twitter actually has applications that really demand connectivity all the time. And then um, high-speed video downloads. Essentially, people are watching uh, movies, and videos, and even live streaming um, of games, etc. And then uh, Facebook, Instagram offer the facility of actually doing instant video uploads. 
So this is an in very inter uh, creates a very interesting uh, paradigm for uh, existing wireless networks. And uh, what does this really translate to? Uh, this translates to the need for fast wireless networks, um, pretty much leveraging uh, new access technologies that, that give you very high speed uh, data. Uh, 3G UMTS uh, offers HSPA plus, this 4G LTE, and uh, not to uh, Uh, not to say about uh, Wi-Fi uh, 802.11n and AC. Uh, AC is really touted as 5G, given the about a gigabit per second uh, super. So that's uh, access technologies. And then, uh, you know, networks have to be intelligent, uh, as we saw from the previous slide. There's a lot of quality of service requirements. Uh, essentially, uh, there's low latency, high speed, rate sensitive traffic like video, all these things have to be accounted for and user profiles are uh, pretty diverse. Uh, then networks need to be really highly configurable and scalable, uh, mainly because uh, many access points need to be deployed to actually meet this kind of uh, data traffic demand. And um, highly deployable and reliable, extremely important because of the nature of being always connected. Uh, and then uh, highly deployable, meaning that demand actually is surging and, uh, you know, uh, there could be flash crowds, things like that, and, you know, you really need to be able to cover these uh, this audience. So that's really what you need to do. So uh, so what does, uh, what does this mean to the service providers? This means that, uh, you know, if you have to deploy, uh, you know, many more base stations, uh, you definitely need more spectrum. And, uh, you know, as we all know, I think uh, deploying uh, wireless networks, uh, cellular networks is, uh, requires a lot of uh, uh, CapEx, and then maintenance is not, not easy because of the requirements, high availability, so OpEx requirements are also very high. And then, uh, so what's the, what's the real advantage here, the business case? So pretty much, uh, you know, operators really need to see or to uplift uh, for return on investment here. And then, uh, in addition to that, uh, you know, very important, uh, I think, is that, uh, you know, they need solution with uh, low total cost of ownership here. So, and then, to the, what does this mean to the solution vendors, you know, who are supplying these networks? So, we really need low power and low cost solutions, because uh, we'll just come to, in a moment, as to see why this is the case. Uh, future proof, which means that uh, the, the base stations or access points really need to support multiple standards at the same time and also be able to uh, configure themselves based on traffic demand, which could be uh, very different. And then all these things uh, really uh, lead to uh, software-driven uh, networks. So, uh, so let's quickly take a look at, uh, at the uh, topography. So this is a view of uh, Boston downtown. Uh, interesting, uh, presents an interesting uh, network uh, topography. So one size really doesn't fit all, which means that a lot of high-rise buildings, uh, there's, uh, there's the beach, and there's a lot of buildings, uh, offices. So different, uh, uh, different kind of uh, channels and uh, so we need uh, different types of uh, networks to guarantee the uh, required uh, performance. So we really have uh, these blue dot, uh, purple dots actually show the macro network uh, base stations, which kind of lines up on near the highway, sort of say not really making sure that uh, you get seamless coverage as you move across the highway. And then there are uh, micro cells, uh, green dots. Um, in buildings, uh, on top of smaller buildings. And then there's the outdoor Pico configuration uh, over here. Uh, and then uh, there's the indoor Pico, which is really in high-rise buildings. You really need to make sure that uh, there's effective coverage, a lot of voice calls as well as data users. And, uh, and then there's also Femto, probably in uh, apartments uh, where people want to actually have their own 
uh, private uh, private access to wireless networks, and obviously the the ubiquitous Wi-Fi is also part of uh, the deployment. Um, it's a big network of Wi-Fi access points uh, in the city. Uh, so that's that's one observation. The other thing is that uh, observation really is that most of the mobile data traffic is really generated indoors. I mean, there is another uh, study I think uh, that's been published, and and by nomadic users, I think it's a Cisco Cisco study. So then this is uh, this is another interesting paradigm, and so we'll see uh, how a solution can be devised here. Now, from the previous uh, slide, we actually saw that uh, uh, you know the the different types of uh, cells that are needed to actually make sure uh, that they provide the appropriate uh, user experience uh, based on the topography. You know, somebody could be on the highway, somebody could be in the multi-story building, etc. So, uh, so let's quickly take a look at uh, the characteristics of the cell types. So we really have the femtocell 9131 really refers to the physical product there. So here the femtocell is uh, typically indoor deployments, uh, small coverage area, 30 meters, uh, single sector, um, uh, and it, it does support multiple uh, uh, technologies, uh, and then uh, you know, it can support uh, you know 16 connections, 8 to 16 connections here. And then uh, if you move forward, we have the Pico cell, uh, the coverage area about 50 meters, uh, good for office spaces, and then the high power of transmission, uh, multiple technologies, and support 100 users. And then we move to the, the metro, which is a uh, smaller coverage area, so probably like 100 meters, uh, higher transmit power. Again, multiple technologies can be supported, that includes Wi-Fi. And uh, it's uh, geared towards a larger capacity, like big offices. Uh, you have about two, up to 256 users. And then we have a macro cell, which is really large coverage area, a uh, couple square kilometers. And then um, URP is about 60 to 63 dBm. Here it's uh, multiple sectors, uh, multiple access technologies, and uh, you know, supports a large number of users, a thousand users. So. So these are the main uh, cell types, uh, uh, types of base stations that can be devised to guarantee that user experience. Scroll down to the next slide here. So, uh, so what type of, uh, so when we actually put all these cell types uh, together, we really come up with uh, um, heterogeneous networks. It's really a combination of uh, different cell types. Uh, and and then uh, you know based on uh, the deployment scenario, uh, essentially end up with a large deployment of a network of small cells, uh, essentially to uh, address the indoor nomadic user traffic generation uh, case. And then uh, the the advantage here is that it offers a, a great solution, uh, satisfies uh, end user experience as well as uh, provides uh, uh, a business case for the service provider. So as you can see here, uh, you know, we have the, the big base station, Pico uh, base station uh, could be with Wi-Fi, then you have also the remote radio head type of configurations or relay configurations which are actually allowed by LTE, and then we have the Femto, the Wi-Fi, and then the, the backhaul is interesting. It could really be uh, cellular or you know, with respect in its Femto or Wi-Fi, it's Refios, uh, you know, home type of configuration, cable DSL, uh, internet backhaul. So this is uh, really how the networking landscape is actually evolving. Now let's quickly look at uh, you know today's deployment scenarios. You know what's been done today uh, from the service providers. So uh, if it's a macro or a micro cell, the deployment is primarily happens uh, by carriers, uh, requires detailed site uh, order planning. Availability is very high. Outages are managed very carefully because uh, you know we really need an always available network. And uh, access control is open, which means that uh, you can really uh, move from one base station to the other without any uh, controls. The mobility is supported, seamless uh, call handling when you move across base stations. And backhaul, typically T1E1 fiber uh, microwave. 
Then if you look at the enterprise uh, PICO type of solution, uh, the current uh, scenario deployment is still uh, ad hoc. Uh, you know, there'll be some amount of planning, but not detailed planning. Availability is most of the time. Uh, there could be uh, outages, maybe abrupt. And with regard to access control, uh, open uh, hybrid, which, uh, it's not really closed. But rarely it's, is it closed. And we support mobility. And uh, when you're looking at enterprise type of uh, uh, eco cells, uh, backhaul is either Ethernet or uh, microwave. And then when we look at the residential femto deployments, uh, really the installation is done by the end user. Um, no, no real planning. Uh, you know, you don't know where to place your box. It's probably installed at home. Uh, uh, you know, wherever all the other electronic gear is uh, sitting. And availability is really unpredictable because you know people can actually turn these things off, uh, move them to a different location, etc. And uh, you know, the and it's also typical for people not to be sharing their bandwidth, uh, you know, uh, with other with other uh, users. So it's a typically closed type of access control. You need authentication uh, to actually get into a, a particular network. And mobility is not really supported because uh, you know it's your own access point, and uh, pretty much um, it's a, it's an isolated um, access point. And the backhaul uh, cable X, XDSL fires. So uh, so what does this really say? This really says uh, that um, you know. These are independent deployments today, and uh, if all these things had to be coordinated uh, to actually get best uh, user uh, quality of experience, you really need these things to be orchestrated. They need to be coordinated, which means that the needs of configuration, control, and management of these uh, access points as well as the network. And uh, and once uh, you once you need to do configuration control and management dynamically, you really are looking at uh, software solutions. So uh, this picture really shows uh, the uh, you know kind of uh, the overall network architecture, today's uh, architecture for uh, multi rat HetNet type of configuration. I'll quickly go through this. Uh, there is the 3G uh, solution, uh, 3 RNC macro solution here, and there is the 3G femto uh, type of solution, and this this really is 4G home, you know, being gateway uh, with uh, femtos, macros, uh, relays, and uh, repeaters. Uh, and then, uh, so the the whole thing is actually managed by uh, EMS, uh, which is uh, separate tray for LTE as well as uh, 3G. And there is OEM, uh, uh, which actually manages the whole network. So, uh, so what does this really show is uh, that uh, you know, network is really dominated by small cell access points, and uh, and there's, there needs to be a lot of focus uh, to make this uh, fully deployable and scalable. On managing uh, these uh, these devices. So now, so we look at the solution space. Um, so this is really that means uh, you know th there is actually a combination of hardware and software. So with hardware, uh, you know, you look at low power, low cost, and highly scalable. Uh, device cost lowers uh, TCO. Uh, lower power enables POA type of indoor solutions. Uh, a lot of traffic generated indoors. Hardware scalability. Um, is needed to support multiple rats, uh, lower cost points. And then if you look at the software side of things, it's all about configuration, optimization, management, really ability to plan and configure uh, these small cells remotely. Uh, since they're going to be large deployments because these are a smaller radius, uh, you really need device management, uh, automated uh, software upgrades, uh, cell monitoring to make sure, sure that uh, these cells are actually up and running. And then, most importantly, they need strategies uh, to adaptively optimize uh, the behavior uh, because uh, you know it's very important because their usage patterns could be totally different. People could turn these things off and on. All these things need to be addressed. So, as you can see, really uh, for an integrated solution, uh, we need a combination of uh, hardware and software. So, uh, we'll quickly look at so what is what is it with regard to uh, the femtocell hardware architecture. 
uh, as you can see, uh, this is a realization of a free scale uh, frontal cell uh, architecture. Really has uh, addresses uh, home base station type of configuration. Uh, we have DSP uh, running all the baseband and there's a power architecture running uh, software stack. We have um, Maple accelerators running a lot of the core um, uh, signal processing for uh, 3G and 4G technologies. We have security engine and backhaul and as well as RF interface. So essentially this uh, this is really uh, a solution that is uh, SOC that is designed uh, at to operate at very low powers in the less than five five watt three to five watt range and it's low cost uh, to actually deploy this type of solution. So we will uh, move to the Satish, next slide. Uh, I've got a few so Tish, I received Hi. a few questions actually from the audience. Uh -huh. Does Freescale already have a, a femtocell architecture solution already deployed? Uh, yes. So we are actually working with, uh, you know, uh, we have a lot of design wins, uh, working with uh, top tier OE, uh, OEMs and operators uh, in uh, Asia PAC uh, and North America and Europe. and. Uh, uh, in Japan, uh, there is a, a small cell that actually uses uh, this type of architecture that's being de currently deployed. Okay, thank you. And just a reminder, please submit your questions and we'll uh, address them with Satish as they come in. Take it away. Thanks. Uh, so, uh, so we kind of uh, move forward to see how, uh, for example, the uh, femtocell architecture can be leveraged uh, to really formulate a PICO type of solution uh, and we we'll quickly look at hardware scalability here. The previous uh, solution had uh, one DSP core to do processing uh, for one technology, and now you actually have two. To this could be for uh, you know excess capacity or for supporting multiple technologies. Similarly, on the power side, we have uh, more powerful accelerators and uh, you know, backhaul uh, simply solutions uh, to deploy in a remote radio head uh, type of configuration. So this this kind of really uh, quick view on how uh, a femtocell architecture can be really scaled up very quickly to support uh, you know increased capacity and uh, you know there are enhancements actually planned on on this thing uh, in the sense that uh, you can actually leverage this architecture and then add more number of cores for example. Uh, to uh, support higher capacity when you move to the metro or macro type of configuration. And there's a digital front end that actually makes the system more efficient. Uh, a very important concept is really Wi-Fi integration. Essentially, you can include a, a baseband solution and really leverage the, the power of the E500 core to support the Wi-Fi stack. And uh, these days, people really talk about bringing data very close to the radio edge. So you can actually have uh, content caching on on the on the small cell, and uh, last but uh, you know but fairly important is really the ability to support microwave backhaul because uh, you know Pico cells could actually be deployed outside where uh, you know there may be no access to fiber or you know, so that's uh, these are the enhancements that could be planned uh, to scale this uh, architecture to meet the demands of uh, wireless networks. So now that's really a, a bird's eye view of uh, what can be done in uh, hardware. Now we actually look at uh, software solution strategy. So um, I actually bring back the picture of the uh, uh, core network and the uh, radio access network here. I kind of just look at only LTE here. Uh, so pretty much what, what we really see is that a software solution strategy is really needed, uh, with, you know, with an end-to-end -end deployment focus. That is really key for carriers to really deploy solutions very quickly. And what does that really mean? That means at the system level, uh, the solution should be really scalable across cell types. We really talked about the cell types, uh, and uh, you know, uh, then radio access technologies, 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi, and bandwidth, which means that you know, LT could actually have a 10 megahertz uh, solution or a 5 megahertz solution or 20. And then um, uh, seamless integration, uh, you know, uh, so here uh, we really talk about uh, multi-vendor applications. By that, what I mean is that the, the components of the solution, like, for example, there could be a, uh, a vendor that actually designs the home in OD, and there could be another vendor that actually defines the 
designs the baseband within that. The stack is actually done by a different vendor. And the home e-node B gateway, security gateways can be designed by different vendors. So all these things actually have interfaces like S1 and FAPI, et cetera. And uh, those, uh, those need to be actually worked through and then there should be interoperability uh, so that the solution can, um, can be deployed which is really the next point. Uh, and then, uh, very importantly, there is the management aspect of it. Uh, you know, uh, this is extremely important because as as more and more access points uh, uh, and small cells get deployed, management becomes uh, extremely important. So on the EMS side, you need self-configuration -con and planning, extremely important here, and then uh, device and resource management. And in the uh, statistics, you know, operations and maintenance side, there's uh, uh, definitely need for optimization of capacity, throughput, and performance because that is really, these are the key uh, indicators that actually uh, guarantee uh, user experience. So this is really broadly, uh, you know, the components that are needed as part of uh, a software solution and uh, which can, you know, kind of translate to end-to-end -end deployment. So, so really what that means is that, uh, you know, these elements of uh, uh, that we just talked about really part of uh, a, a standard called uh, you know, self-organized networks uh, or SON. Uh, essentially, uh, the, the standard bodies actually recognize this thing and have taken a lot of uh, these things into consideration while devising the standard. And, uh, you know, we, here's a snapshot of how the self-organized networks really have evolved over the past years. So 3GPP uh, standards are available, as you can see, all the way from uh, uh, last five years, a lot of work done here. Uh, release 8 through release 11 is available. So the, the simple idea is uh, to start with, I think, uh, the small cell base station really has uh, to have the ability of configuration. It's really being able to uh, automatically connect to the network. It's commissioning. Uh, neighborless management and uh, PCI assignments. So this is the basic uh, configuration for a, for a base station or a small cell. And then the next step, once this is done, is really optimization uh, with uh, mobility, uh, robustness, uh, access channel performance because you know people want to be connected all the time. Uh, load balancing is extremely important because uses patterns change, and then ICIC is really. Uh, interference coordination, which is extremely important, uh, especially in a, in a dense network type of uh, setting uh, to take care of interference issues. And then, uh, you know, there's the overlay aspect of it, which really talks about optimizing uh, coverage because, uh, uh, you know, there's already an existing macro network, and then when you actually underlay with, uh, with small cells, essentially you need to optimize uh, both the macro as well as the small cell network for coverage and capacity. Outage management is extremely important because we need a highly available network. There's the healing aspect, which means that when you diagnose a fault, you automatically uh, uh, resolve it. There's a minimization of dry testing and energy savings because we need uh, a low power, low cost efficient network that is operational. And then the, uh, the release 11 really talks about kind of integrating this uh, in a heterogeneous network type of configuration uh, where you, you need automatic network management. It's a lot of debug tools that need to be automated because the big network that's going to be deployed, multi rad support, and then uh, Wi-Fi integration. So now uh, once, uh, so we kind of get, get a bird's eye view of uh, what these things do. We'll kind of delve into a little bit more detail here. Uh, so, so Son, uh, you know, we just talked about a lot of body of work that's been done by the standards body. Now, what's really the, the value prop here? So uh, these two, um, you know, uh, pictures, uh, this is data from Infonetics Research. We kind of summarized uh, the value prop. Uh, so why are, uh, you know, why are really operators uh, deploying Son type of solutions? So uh, because I think, uh, like we talked about earlier, uh, definitely need OPEX uh, reduction from operators to make the business case. So uh, carriers are actually seeing uh, benefits in the early deployments for macro networks, uh, which is really what is being optimized today. 
and then uh, you know some guarantees improvement in capacity uh, overall network performance and then uh, really uh, you know also enables small cell usage and uh, you know it's it's well recognized that um, that small cell underlay is the because of these reasons uh, you know uh, that small cell underlay is really going to dominate uh, network deployment and uh, and these headnets uh, will definitely use uh, SON extensively. And then uh, if you look at the market size here, uh, the total market actually uh, with uh, for optimization of uh, you know 3G as well as uh, 4G networks uh, pretty much uh, expected to be about 4.5 billion by, by 2016. Uh, so this is really a, a evolving market clearly and a lot of work to be done and uh, you know, based on what we saw it is going to be the key element of, uh, of next generation network uh, deployment. So uh, I, uh, you know so this the next two slides we talk about uh, in a very high level uh, the features uh, of uh, in a son there's actually like we looked at before there's uh, multiple elements uh, uh, to the to the puzzle so to say and um, and uh, the the features uh, that are listed here is really in terms of uh, current prioritization by the carriers uh, as to what uh, you know what kind of features are useful to be deployed and uh, the ones that are highlighted in red really talk about, uh, you know, solutions, uh, features of SON that actually involve um, system level that have system level implications. So, uh, just to, uh, for example, I'll pick uh, row number three. Essentially, uh, this talks about coverage and capacity optimizations. Uh, so a description of this particular SON feature is that uh, you know uh, the goal is to provide sufficient coverage and capacity uh, by utilizing network resources extremely effectively, and uh, you know you know and then uh, obviously you know, throughput and has to be maximized, latency minimized, so that the feature can be uh, you know user experience can be optimized. So in order to do that. Uh, you see like uh, four columns as uh, so hardware, software, firmware, and uh, operating system. Uh, so all these uh, elements actually need to be involved, which is like you need um, uh, efficient hardware, uh, efficient software, and the uh, firmware. When I talk about firmware, it means that you really need uh, acceleration at the, at the baseband level to make sure that you can squeeze in uh, more users and, you know, uh, get higher throughput. And there's also some uh, uh, operating system type of considerations, uh, mainly because uh, you know uh, it's existing in operating systems. Uh, you know there are many available today. Linux is the uh, OS of uh, choice, and that really has to be optimized. So pretty much we are really talking about end-to-end -end, uh, optimization within uh, within devices to make sure that uh, these. Uh, uh, features can be well supported. So then there is, uh, uh, you know, the next uh, topic is, uh, you know, seamless integration of multi-vendor solutions. Uh, we just briefly touched upon it earlier, which means that the full system solution is really comprises of multiple vendors. Uh, you know, L1 could be done by somebody, L2, a different vendor, and so on, for example, a different vendor. Uh, and then there's optimization, batch optimization, Wi-Fi integration. Uh, in fact, Wi-Fi integration is becoming more and more important uh, because uh, it, you know there's a lot of uh, push towards complementing Wi-Fi and cellular solutions, uh, mainly because uh, uh, you know the data coverage can be shared between Wi-Fi as as well as cellular, and then uh, you know cellular can be used to provide ubiquitous voice services. Uh, Wi-Fi actually helps uh, cellular networks uh, to do offload. So it's an interesting paradigm that actually is, uh, although it's an R11 feature, it's uh, you know it's it's evolving and people are actually pushing uh, Wi-Fi and server solution today. So um, so 
So, and uh, you know, moving forward, uh, the next slide uh, talks about features. Um, again, more features here. Uh, the key message on on this slide really is that, as, as you see, the the software column actually is is really dominant. And pretty much what we're trying to say really is that software solutions, uh, you know, are extremely important for deployment of um, you know wireless networks. I mean, that's really the key message in this slide. Uh, so this kind of uh, really summarizes as to how uh, you know SON is actually involved in uh, uh, across multiple elements of the network. So as you can see that uh, you know part of the solution really needs to be in as per in, in the inode B or the, or the uh, base station. Uh, part of the solution is really uh, touches the OAM, uh, the EMS, as well as uh, the uh, MME aspects of LDE. So. Really, uh, SAN actually is a distributed um, software. is really distributed across multiple elements in the in the wireless network. So, Tish, I've received two questions from the audience um, on this slide. First, where is the industry on SAN for small cells? And then, secondly, and this is coming from Padma, how big is Freescale? Um, how how big is Freescale on SAN as well? Okay. So uh, the first question, uh, I think, uh, you know, the industry, currently the work on SON is being um, uh, focused primarily on macro cell networks, uh, you know, networks in uh, North America uh, from tier one operators uh, is being optimized using SON uh, techniques and uh, seen very good results actually for macro networks. However, on small cells, it's, uh, it's really early because the deployment is kind of uh, starting to take shape. And I think uh, in the in the coming months, uh, as the deployment kind of uh, moves forward, this will form an important component of the of the solution. And uh, with re with regard to how big Freescale is on um, on this um, on this topic, uh, Freescale has been uh, you know uh, has uh, uh, system on chip uh, solutions for uh, all base station form factors, uh, femto. Uh, Pico, uh, Metro, and Macro, and actively, uh, you know, uh, working with uh, multiple tier one uh, operators and uh, OEMs and many small vendors to kind of uh, shape up the overall uh, solution. So that's really uh, it's a lot of work is being done here. So, uh, so now, uh, you know, essentially we, we looked at, uh, you know, uh, sound for uh, headnets and uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, focus a little bit more on how, uh, you know, uh, this solution can actually be uh, uh, formulated uh, as part of a, a small cell or a pico cell type of deployment. So, uh, so if you can focus on this slide here. The, the solution actually consists of, uh, you know, BSP and uh, baseband accelerators, uh, the small cell solution here, uh, which actually uh, supports all the layer one functionality. And then there is the power processor and accelerators that actually support, uh, you know, all the different uh, applications uh, uh, from layer two, as well as network control operations. Uh, and then kind of put together Form the end-to-end -end solution. So, uh, uh, with regard to the uh, power processor and accelerator, we can see that, that uh, there's a SON application, uh, there's radio resource control, which actually talks about uh, uh, bringing in users into the network. Uh, there is the RRM application that actually manages a lot of the radio resource requirements. Uh, there is ICIC. Uh, for interference uh, management and uh, intercell coordination. Uh, cell search, which is really helps uh, the small cell to discover itself uh, when it's uh, uh, freshly brought into the network. There's the OAM, which actually is another important application uh, for monitoring the network. Uh, cell configuration, we talked about it. Uh, the scheduler that actually schedules uh, users appropriately based on the profile, whether uh, there's voice uh, user uh, data, 
and there is the uh, layer one and layer two uh, FAPI application. So essentially, uh, this thing, uh, this picture really shows how uh, software applications can be created on the architecture to kind of devise a small cell solution. And then, uh, so delving into a little bit more detail here, uh, here we talk about, uh, you know, at, uh, at the physical layer, how uh, software optimizations uh, can be done and how the functionality is being split between uh, software and, uh, and the accelerators. Uh, example, if you look at the LTE downlink, uh, then the accelerators actually cover most of the downlink path. And then uh, just for, uh, you know, pushing in feedback information to the network, we actually need a uh, little bit of software support. So this slide really kind of, uh, uh, you know, demonstrates how at the layer one level uh, we can make uh, appropriate quantification of uh, what functionality needs to be present as accelerators, in accelerators, and uh, what are the function needs to be uh, part of software. And then uh, moving on, this action, this slide really talks about, you know, how can, for example, we realize a two-sector LTE solution with this type of architecture that really has uh, DSPs, accelerators, and uh, processors. So um, the the, the purple block here actually is a uh, is a power architecture core, one of the cores, and there's a second one here, and there are, there are two DSP cores in here, and then there is the accelerator. So the two DSP cores really, uh, you know, one way of partitioning uh, a two-sector LTE solution is uh, this particular core can actually support uh, sector one, and it does all the downlink and uplink processing, and the uh, the box on the right, which is another DSP core, that can support um, uh, sector two, which actually does all the processing. And if you move to the power architecture cores, uh, these two things are really connected by uh, uh, the FAPI interface, which is really a Femto Forum API for communication between L1 and uh, layer one and layer two. And in here, for example, you can see the uh, the MAC and RLC processing in the schedule that actually is part of uh, this uh, core, uh, and then uh, the FAPI integration is really an API for uh, for L2, which can which can be coming in from different vendors. And uh, so, as you can see, uh, the layer one function uh, uh, two functionality actually is part of this uh, core. And in, in this uh, power architecture core, a lot of the uh, radio resource management, the sound type of functionality is actually handled on other core, as well as all the interface to the uh, to the Ethernet backhaul or handle here, and uh, ROC, PDCB processing. So pretty much, uh, you know, a lot of the upper layer processing is dedicated to one core. Uh, the scheduler and the MAC is driven out of um, this core here, and the two DSPs actually work in concert to support the two-sector operation. So this is another example where software architecture can be uh, uh, employed to devise uh, solutions that uh, that provide the required performance. And uh, so the previous slide really talked talked about uh, you know uh, partitioning at the layer one and layer two levels. The other important aspect is uh, really the um, the operating system uh, level acceleration. Uh, this actually is also very key because uh, LTE today presents uh, very high uh, throughputs and challenges. Uh, for example, a 20 megahertz uh, downlink uh, uh, channel should support 150 megabits per second of throughput, and then the uplink has to support 75 megabits. And this, when when coupled with uh, with voice over LTE or uh, you know 3G UMTS. Uh, which actually has uh, voice traffic that actually presents a completely different uh, uh, latency profile. Um, th there is there is a need for optimization across uh, multiple layers. So here we look at um, you know how can we leverage uh, the, the operating uh, operating system level optimizations. So essentially, uh, so the 
there is a SEC or a, a VT SEC. Uh, this, this is at the Ethernet level, and you have Ethernet drivers, and then you have something called the FastPath engine, which kind of takes care of uh, a lot of the optimized packet processing to actually move data um, between uh, the DSP and the upper layers. And uh, so there is a vertical stack uh, that actually provides, uh, you know, control plane, uh, which is from Freescale that provides control plane and management um, applications. And then uh, in addition to that, you're going to have your own custom applications um, that can be uh, used in the user space as well as in the kernel space. So this, uh, this in summary, kind of uh, talks about, briefly touches upon the need for uh, kernel space or operation uh, OS level type of uh, accelerations that are essential in order to guarantee high throughputs uh, for a jeep. So, uh, so here, uh, so this is uh, you know, come to the uh, towards the end of the presentation. So, basically, what uh, what we're trying to say here is that um, you know, Freescale Silicon uh, is um, capable of actually providing. Uh, so, uh, system on chip type of solution to address uh, 3G, 4G uh, technology deployment. In addition to that, uh, you know there is the software element. So as we as we go through this uh, slide here, so pretty much uh, you know a flexible architecture uh, is supported because uh, you know Freescale actually has. Uh, Silicon for all cell types. As you can see here, there's a uh, there's a network uh, that actually has um, macro cells, uh, so 4860 that can support a thousand users or more than that. And for femtocell uh, configuration, we have the BSC9131 that can support femtocell type of solution. Uh, the 4420 is geared towards metro operation, uh, supporting up to 256 users. And then uh, there's the PICO cells on the 9132 that can support up to 180 users. And then the LTE can actually be also, 4860 can be used as a backhaul and donor base station configuration also. And then uh, if we look to the future, I mean, the, the solution is actually evolving into a cloud RAN type of configuration. What does this mean? This means that uh, uh, all the RAN functionality is actually getting centralized, more so the baseband. I mean, uh, so pretty much all baseband processing is being centralized, done in a centralized location. So what this uh, offers is that uh, reduces the number of cell sites. Uh, pretty much you just have a radio head instead of the entire uh, base station processing on these uh, on these uh, cell sites. And, uh, you know, it also can provide a much better uh, a way to do load balancing on uh, on different geographic areas. Um, so the 4860, which is really the flag flagship processor from Freescale, actually is uh, um, ideal for uh, cloud run type of processing. And then, uh, as you can see here, um, the remote uh, radio head configurations can be, uh, you know, you formulated using the 9132 type of uh, SOC or the 31 uh, and the backhaul is really SIP3 or it could be leaky links and then uh, can also support uh, remote radio heads. So so in summary here, um, you know, Freescale has a headnet enabled solution uh, just geared towards uh, really, uh, you know, matching uh, or providing, uh, you know, satisfying the end user experience, which means that headnet solutions have to be deployed. Uh, on the SOC side, uh, along with Code Warrior, which is really the, uh, the tools uh, that you can use to develop software on the, on the SOC. Uh, highly integrated solution, as we looked at, supporting multiple um, technologies uh, and power and cost optimized, which is really extremely important for a deployable solution. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, this uh, has to be complemented with uh, software. As we saw that software elements are extremely important uh, towards providing a system solution. Uh, so Vortica software solutions really um, are available uh, for uh, 
base band or the physical layer, the stack, uh, and then also optimizations uh, at the operating uh, system level. And uh, combined, combine this software solution uh, with the SOC, pretty much, uh, you know, um, a vendor really has a full solution that can enable rapid deployment and uh, more so in the small cells uh, and the head net area because uh, you know the insatiable appetite uh, really needs to be satisfied so uh, pretty much uh, uh, the combination of uh, SOC and software solution enables uh, full realization of uh, end user experience. So, Tish, I just received so, a question from the audience. Um, is Cloud RAN a feasible concept? And it goes back to your last slide 24. Correct. So, uh, it's, it's a good question. Uh, you know, it, it, is, it is indeed an advanced concept, and, uh, uh, you know, it, it does offer a lot of advantages. Like I said, uh, centralized basement processing is uh, uh, makes it uh, convenient uh, for deployment. It does, you know, also provide, you know, have a, you know, a single point of failure which needs to be addressed basically by high availability and redundant type of solution. But uh, but this is the way of the future. I mean, uh, where you know, for increased uh, capacity. Uh, and increased uh, throughput. This is really the the way to go. And uh, uh, operators are actually working on this type of solutions. Uh, you know, vendors are working on it. It's in the early stages, a definite movement in this direction. So in, Thanks, so in conclusion, another one. Uh -huh. Are other vendors working on SSC solutions, and how does Freescale stand out? Yeah. So. Um, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, there is a good, uh, you know, healthy ecosystem of players, uh, SOC vendors, uh, as well as um, you know, stack vendors actually putting together uh, solutions as we speak. And uh, uh, Freescale, uh, you know, in terms of providing a full solution, really has uh, a, a leadership position. Uh, Freescale has SOCs like we just saw. At, uh, that address different form factors, uh, Femto, Pico, Metro, and Macro. Uh, and uh, in complementing the system on chip solutions, there is the uh, layer one commercial software. In addition to that, uh, Freescale is also, uh, you know, doing uh, uh, interoperating uh, solutions with uh, with the stack vendors in an end-to-end -end setting, which means that uh, it's uh, it could rapidly uh, facilitate deployment. Thanks, Satish. Sure. Uh, so, in conclusion, uh, really, <laughs> how did this all happen? It's really the you know explosion of smartphone usage. Pretty much, uh, you know, uh, it's really a paradigm shift uh, in uh, in end user expectation. I mean. Uh, you know, these days, if I if I do if I'm not able to download a video in like less than a second, I'm I'm actually really you know concerned about it. So so it's really uh, completely changed the the way things uh, things are done. And uh, obviously, you know, as we saw, this poses a lot of challenges uh, for wireless network uh, solutions. So. Uh, so the solution is really, you know, moving in the direction of, um, you know, underlay of uh, really head nets uh, with uh, with small cells, which means that uh, there is the existing macro cell uh, deployment, and uh, you know, it will be uh, complemented by a large deployment of um, small cells that actually could potentially communicate with uh, with the macros and then. Um, seamlessly uh, provide uh, good user experience. So in order to do that, uh, we need low-cost uh, silicon-on-chip devices. So uh, and uh, obviously, without uh, software on these devices, there won't be an end-to-end -end solution. So that's uh, extremely important. And then uh, you know, SON is the other aspect. SON software 
which is uh, absolutely essential here to deploy this uh, and manage these big networks. And then uh, last but not least, uh, there is an evolution towards uh, multi radio access technology solutions. By that, uh, you know, 3G and 4G and Wi-Fi have to be simultaneously supported, which means, uh, you know, a, a small cell will have a um, you know, bunch of wise users, another bunch of uh, cellular data users, along with Wi-Fi uh, coverage that could uh, that could effectively share uh, throughput as well as uh, facilitate uh, offload. That's uh, in summary uh, the future uh, network as we see today. We can Thanks, Satish. Questions. We've reached the end of our allotted time. You know, actually, I do have one more question here. This is coming from Venkatesha, and um, she provided a couple, so let me just ask the first one. What level of MIMO are operators, operators deploying right now, 2x2, two 4x4, by two, four by four, and what's the trend going ahead? Okay. Uh, so uh, we are looking at, uh, you know, if you if you actually take small cell type of solutions, uh, the de facto configuration is uh, two by two MIMO. And, uh, you know, as you move towards uh, uh, bigger form factors like metro, macro, four by four uh, definitely becomes important because uh, offers better uh, uh, capacity, better throughput. So I think definitely the industry is headed in that direction. All right, Satish, and we've reached the end of our allotted time. Do you have any closing notes? Yeah, I think, uh, uh, so in, in summary, I think, uh, you know, the, the solution uh, for next-gen networks uh, really involves uh, a system-type approach. Uh, Freescale uh, uh, is well-positioned uh, with uh, system-on-chip devices and uh, complementary software and uh, the network is actually moving in the direction of uh, SON. Once again, you just heard Satish Anandhai, Product Marketing Manager of Digital Networking App Freescale. The on-demand version of this webinar will be, made, will be made available on rcrwireless.com within 24 hours of this broadcast. Everybody who attended and registered will receive a link to the on-demand version. I'm Jason Ozels with RCR Wireless. Thank you for joining and have a good day.